All right. Thank you for inviting me here. So my name is Anita Pese and I'm a senior lecturer of HRM, or should I say actually nowadays people management and leadership. So I've been working at Haga Helia around already around 11 years, teaching in all, all different level programs we have, BBA, Masters and also in the EMBA. And uh, uh, well, in different, mostly in uh, international business programs. And uh, before starting my career here in, in higher education, I worked in large companies in various fields of, of industries, developing and leading human resources. And uh, for a long, well, altogether, I would say more than 20 years after my graduation from the university. Actually, my first HR work was already in the 1980s, at the very end of, of that, that time. So, so I'm kind of a senior in, in what it comes to HR work. So still kind of balancing between the practitioner and the, the, uh, the education academic uh, person in my own identity. And alongside my work, I have uh, studied in a doctoral program at the University of Westminster in the UK. And I'm researching and have been researching executive women leaders career identities. Uh, well, current and old challenges, I would probably say because I got already interested in the topic of executive level women while I was working in the corporate world. So when I was uh, taking part in the recruitment of leaders and managers, I evidenced that the higher up we were recruiting someone in the organization, the fewer women candidates we had. And uh, I was also wondering where all the brilliant women in the middle management disappeared from the process and from where all the men suddenly popped up or appeared in these processes. So somehow there was something going on that we didn't see so many women applying for the positions. And then we, I was already wondering and in, what interested in, in the topic of executive women at that point. And then I started to dig a little bit deeper to the phenomenon and well learned to know that it is named as the leaking pipeline. And uh, something surprising and uh, exciting actually came up when I looked into the statistics. Uh, well, quite many people know that Finland is famous for, for well, in the, the international rankings of gender equality, as long as other, other Scandinavian countries as well. And we have had and we still have visible and famous women politicians, for example, our former president Tarja Halonen and uh, current prime minister Sanna Marin. But when it comes to the share of women at the executive level in the private sector companies, we're not even at the average European level. And that is, to me, that was shocking and surprising. Uh, unfortunately, there is not much data and statistic available uh, other than in stock listed companies. But what I've seen and uh, been following that the percentage of women at the top management teams in the business related roles uh, has been under 15% in Finland always. Uh, and that's quite a low number. Uh, in total, women count for around 27% in the executive teams in the stock listed companies as well, which is of course better, but it also shows the segregation of work, which is very steep in Finland. So we have very much gone into the women's work and men's work here. And sadly, we could say that this, uh, well, uh, gender equality box is ticked with women 
in human resources and communications at the top executive level or in the top management teams. So women are not working at the core of, of business where all the, the important business decisions are, are made. Of course, if you ask me as an HR person, I would say that people related decisions are the most important, but generally people think that the business decisions are, are vital for, for the company's success. This leads to, to, to my, my thesis, my doctoral research. So, so to investigate the executive level women, I wanted to take a little bit like a, a less traveled path uh, because there is a lot of information and a lot of research about the barriers women face when, when they are pursuing their careers in leadership. So I wanted to concentrate on women who have made it to the top management teams and especially to the male dominant business related roles in large companies in Finland. So my doctoral thesis is about how executive women have navigated up there and I built a model of executive women's career identity. And for that I I uh, used four perspectives, so I took a look at the actual career patterns or the parts, so how they moved from one position to another there. And then I looked into how gender and leader roles uh, were idea or leader role identities were articulated in, in their career stories uh, of, of my interviewees. Uh, also, I took a look at the uh, discourse around the concept of success, how that guides the career choices, and then the career resources that the research participant felt uh, well important for, for their career enablers. So in my research, I had uh, 17 in-depth interviews as, as the primary data. And also I started with a pilot study with 365 women's interviews. That was actually a Finland's 100 years uh, independence campaign where we, or a campaign presented one, one woman for, or one woman for, for each independence year, uh, celebrities uh, or celebrations. So, so that was part of, of, the, of the, the beginning of, of my research. So when it comes to the contribution of, of my, my research, so it is the model of career identity. And uh, I could summarize it so that uh, the ex executive women's uh, careers are constructed on eudaimonic values, authenticity, meaningfulness and excellency. And if I shortly go through each and every one of, of these three, three areas that we're integrating the, the identities. So authenticity came uh, true in both the, the gender role, being a woman, and the leader role discourses. And uh, it was something that was uh, emphasized as an, uh, well, as uh, something to integrate these two roles that often are seen as somehow incongruent and, uh, well, kind of uh, not, not matching together that well. So in my research, the, the womanness was not emphasized at all. Well, it was emphasized, but not so that it would be something to, to kind of uh, overly be, be associated with leadership. Uh, it was perceived in, in multiple ways. So being a woman in business was seen as neutral. That was the most common way of, of, uh, of perceiving uh, that gender at work or even irrelevant. It was also perceived as a, as a benefit and a barrier. But what was surprising is that uh, these women didn't see gender as a barrier to themselves, but only to, to other women. Well, of course, some admitted that you have to, to, well, take another route if you see the road blocked somewhere. So maybe they had experienced some, some discrimination at some point of their career, but they were not emphasizing that at all. So all in all, they were not hiding the womanness 
of, of in themselves or how they uh, were uh, expressing themselves. Uh, but they didn't behave like men either. Uh, so not pretending to be something they, they were not was kind of the, the tone they had being themselves. So the authenticity in there as well as in, in, in leadership. Uh, the meaningfulness part was related to, to career choices and uh, the concept of success. So how a career success was, was defined, it was defined through multiple forms of, of uh, meaningfulness. The meaningful work itself, uh, the meaningfulness of working with others and uh, with others influence others' work and through meaningful life as well. So seeking balance in, in, in their lives. Uh, surprisingly, the traditional success measures like money, status, power, as career goals were not mentioned at all. So some of the women actually ignored the whole concept of career altogether, and they said that they never had any career plans. Their need to, to learn more, to do more, to get new challenges, guided their careers rather than a dream of being a powerful leader. So they just kind of, I can't say that they were drifting, no way. They were determined and they wanted to do excellent jobs. So, so in that sense, they wanted more, but not uh, career or position wise, more through the content and influence. So actually the excellency is, is the third part of, of their identity and that is very, very kind of uh, integral of, of the top positions in business because the competition is hard, you have to be good. And they were emphasizing the demonstrated achievements and healthy performance orientation that is required when you want to go up there, take responsibility and, and make decisions. Uh, so you have to be good and willing to develop. And what was surprising here was that the, the women did not talk about success when they were referring to their experiences, their past experiences and their careers, but they were talking about achievements, so a milder version of that. So this might be something that is related to the Finnish or Scandinavian modesty, uh, but maybe the point being that, that you don't have to kind of, uh, uh, of be that, well, how could I say it? You can be humble and still do a good job. So humbleness was resonating in the discourse. So you don't have to be overly extra super good and, and bragging about it around. So, so doing a good job and being open about it, showing it. So that's, that is something that leads you to, to good results. And clearly for, for, for the executive business position, business understanding is, is a crucial competency and also financial understanding was emphasized. So doing the, the kind of the numerical studies, uh, working with numbers as well is something, something that was emphasized. Uh, uh, and of course, the excellency in, in leadership is, is a necessity. So uh, what makes this then interesting is that surprisingly, uh, in prior research, these uh, softer values like the eudaimonia uh, have been seen as barriers or choices women need to make or to, to sacrifice something for their careers in leadership. But these women actually said something else they hadn't sacrificed anything and they haven't choose, chosen between authenticity and balance or excellency, but they just kind of simply had it all somehow. Not maybe surprisingly, but being determined and, uh, and well, doing a good job and doing what they were interested in doing. Well, uh, I would like to change so much, <laughs> but as I said, so, 
So making the changes that takes time and at the societal level and at the individual level, the things that we do are, are well, somehow might be even different, even different types of, of actions we, we do or, or things that are, are needed. But what I would like to see in the society, of course, are the race of women shares in the top ma management and how to go there well following maybe the advice of, of my successful uh, women participants in, in my research doing a good job and uh, how they have done it. So going there uh, and doing the good job. Uh, also, I would like to, to have some erosion of, of gender talk at work. So as we know that gender is not a competence and it has nothing to do with skills nor with aspirations or competence. And especially uh, as the, the binary gender thinking is becoming a little bit old fashioned, I think it's very important to keep in mind that work that, well, it is enough to, to be who you are of course, being the best version of yourself so that people trust you and want to work with you. But anyway, so that 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 people would, well, talk and put the gender uh, matters in where they belong to. And of course, I'm not saying that we should, well, abandon the gender talk and the gender research uh, altogether. Of course not. We need that and we need to monitor the progress and at the societal level and by research and so on. But in everyday life, it might be easier that that gender is not emphasized that much when we talk about actually something else, the competence and skills and achievements and, and so on when it comes to the executive women. And I think also something that I would hope that we would quit using the word courage when it comes to, to women leaders because there's nothing to be afraid of the word courage includes the kind of the connotation of fear in it and what is there to be afraid of in work so it's only work and nobody actually talks about courage when men are applying to positions so to change that and i actually see it so that if we don't need to work courage uh, in the language when we talk about women in leadership, it will signal the true gender equality. So I would like to see that happening soon.